Do you have any other uh, thoughts as to if you were to offer, you know, say, let's say three points uh, that any author submitting to an English language Western journal should absolutely pay attention to without any hesitation that they, that these things bare minimum need to be done to have a chance of getting published in the Western literature. And if I can just take an aside first, I forgot to mention one little thing on picking a journal. It's a silly way, but one that can uh, help an author an awful lot. When you're writing the man, when they're writing the manuscript, they're going to be citing various things. Who do they cite? What papers do they cite? Where were they published? Mm -hmm. That will often tell more than anything else. The journals are the set of journals that they likely want to think about for for, for submission. submission. Now back to your question. Uh, uh, good uh, ed editor is going to look for uh, a well laid out manuscript, well written, well edited, uh, clean. Uh, yes, they will do editing later on, but if you can make their job easier, if you can make it easier for a referee to understand what you're trying to say, more chance of it getting submitted. And that's really what you want to do. You're trying to communicate to another scientist somewhere who's interested in your work, wants to be able to read the paper and understand it, and not have to send you an email, get on the phone, talk to you at meetings to find out everything you did. They want to understand what you did in the paper. So uh, editors are looking for something new, something novel, something that's going to attract the attention of their readers, uh, attract readers to their journal. Are there things that uh, an author should not do? Let's turn the table. What are... What are some things that an author should not do, absolutely, when considering submitting to any journal, whether it's a Western journal or, or uh, a, a local journal? Um, that's a good question. Let me think about that for a second. Uh, not to do. Not to try to make, uh, uh, come up with, with, with something that the data do not show at all to try to extend the data so far that they solve uh, all of whatever, all of evolution's uh, problems in one, in one, uh, in one so, spot. So not to extrapolate not too to much extrapolate out of the data. Not to extrapolate too much. It's exactly it. Um, don't be, it, there's, a, there's a fine line between that balance of being concise and clear and letting people know what you did and describing everything in so much detail to make sure they understand what we did, and that's a hard one. That's a tough. We all have. We all uh, work on that all the time and are dwelling on it. And I tend to be uh, personally I, too concise. I try to do things, and I think, well, everybody will understand this, but they don't. Of course, I have to elaborate a little more. Others of my colleagues go on and on and on when they could have said, you know, we sampled uh, five plants. <laughs> <laughs> And not go into the into the into the great uh, details of trying to pick those out. So um, that's that balance is good. Um, don't don't necessarily uh, look for things that uh, it's, this is a common student problem of trying to have figures and tables and everything that supports the conclusions, but duplicate it. So you, you don't need. Um, you don't need to have a graph and a table if they both show the same thing. 